In this HVACR training video, we're going over how to braise refrigerant tubing to the indoor unit and also to the outdoor unit while flowing nitrogen and using our aerosoline torch. First off, I just want to tell you that we have our line set connected to the outdoor unit and it's running inside the building and connecting to the indoor coil. We're going to wait to cut our filter dryer in and braze that in till the last thing that we do. And we're going to start out here at the outdoor unit. Our first step is to remove the valve cores right here so they don't melt. We're going to use our valve core removal tools. But we're just going to use the back end for now in order to remove these valve cores from the system so they don't melt when we're hitting it with a torch. The nice thing about these, they have a magnet so you can just set them out of the way, but I'm going to set them up top. Now these copper tubes have already been cleaned and we're going to be using our Silfos 15 in order to braze our joints. I'm also temporarily going to put these caps back on just to make sure that we don't get any hot humid air inside the tubing. In order to flow nitrogen, we need a nitrogen flow reg as well as the primary regulator. And so we're going to make sure that this is backed out first. We're going to open the tank up. Then we're going to turn this into about 50 PSI right about there. And then we're going to allow this little ball to rise. I don't know if you can see that. And so we're going to connect this onto the vapor line. So you can see the purge is at 20 cubic feet per hour. And so we're going to let that system purge. And then while we're breezing, we're going to drop it down to this level right here at three to five cubic feet per hour. We don't want to pressurize the tubing, we just want nitrogen to flow through so there's no oxygen. Now over here with our air acetylene tank, we have our regulator attached, we're reading empty, this is closed and this is backed out. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up the tank and we're going to leave our wrench on there and then we can turn this in clockwise. And then now we have acetylene there, so now we're ready to go. So before we start brazing, I'm going to turn this down and then we can light our torch. We have it all wrapped up with our wet rag. I'm just going to move this up out of the way. We can light our torch. We want to avoid heating up this valve because there's an o-ring inside. You don't want to melt that. I'm going to re-wet this rag with cold water and then I'm going to switch this nitrogen hose over to the other side. We put our rag over the surface valve, switch the nitrogen. I also turn the nitrogen flow up just a little bit higher so the ball rises a little bit more. And here we go. Now we're going to braise the joints on the inside of the building. Now we're at the indoor coil and we removed both this cover and this cover. You can see our thermostatic expansion valve right here and we have one joint on our 3 8 line so we're going to have to put a wet rag here when brazing to protect the TXV from overheating. The other thing is there was insulation around this bulb. This is the TXV bulb. Uh, but the thing is I want to remove this because I've got one, two, three joints here because I've got 5 8 OD going to three-quarter OD and we have our reducing coupling. So 
I could put a wet rag here to protect this bulb, but I'm just going to take it off just as an extra precaution to protect it from overheating. And I can just remove it right here. I'm still going to put a wet rag on here because I have my copper to aluminum connection. After I braze all this in, then that's when I'm going to braze in my filter dryer. So you don't want to have contaminants basically getting stored in the filter dryer from during your brazing process. That's why you do this last. last thing that we're going to do is we're going to install the filter dryer and so the arrow is going to point towards the indoor coil because it's an air conditioning system and so we're going to make our first cut back here remember our nitrogen is still flowing through but now we have an open section so we're just going to line it up We're going to deburr both of these sides. We could have sanded this before we cut, and I wouldn't have to hold the end shut. Next, we're going to pull our plugs on the filter dryer. We're going to allow the nitrogen to go through here just to make sure that there is nitrogen in this whole area. Now here's a little trick I do. I just cover over the paint of the filter dryer in order to try not to burn it. So it's not really to protect the filter dryer much as uh, just not burning the filter dryer. This is extremely important when you're outside because the uh, paint is a barrier to the, to the steel which could end up rusting and causing a refrigerant leak down the road. Now we're ready to breeze, and this has been running nitrogen for a while now, so I should be good to go. Looks like we're good to go, so let's go outside and do our leak test. We're back outside and we're going to disconnect our flow meter and we're going to do our nitrogen pressure test. We're going to test for leaks and we're going to use a digital gauge to monitor. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to back this up. We're going to take this off. Over here we're going to turn this valve. We're going to put this right on here in order to shut off the pathway. 
So you see our valve is shut and this is shut back over at our regulator. We're going to put this back in. We're going to turn this in. We're just going to turn it up to say right about 75. That's fine. And we can take this off right here. And we're going to add this here and put this on. So this valve's going to remain shut. We're just using this as a T. That's, that's all we're doing right now. And so there you can see our pressure is going to be right here. I'm going to open this and open this. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're only pressure testing up to say about 50 PSI. So if there's a leak inside or outside, you know, you don't want to waste 200 PSI of nitrogen. So we're just pressure testing up to 58 first. You see it's not moving. So we don't have any small leaks anywhere. We don't have to go run inside. We know because we have a digital gauge that we're very precise with our measurements. We're in tenths of a PSI. Before you pressure test to a high pressure, you want to look at the indoor evaporator coils rating plate and you're looking for the low side of the system's design pressure. So you can pressure test it up to 450 PSI as a max. So just because this rating plate may say six or 700, you want to go by this one right here, which says 450. Now we're only going to pressure test up to about 350 PSI. And so we can turn this in to right about there. So we're at about 375 PSI there. We're going to next open this up. Let's turn this on so you can see it. So I'm just using my valve here and my valve here. You also notice I have an end cap on it. What we're going to do is once we get up to our, our main pressure, we're going to hold that for about 10 minutes. So that's our nitrogen pressure test. It's also called a standing pressure test. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this valve and I'm just going to disconnect this right here. This way there's no accidental bleed across over here. I'm going to put my cap on and now we're going to wait 10 minutes to see if this pressure ends up falling. During the first one minute or so, the nitrogen pressure is going to, uh, it might fall, it might rise. It depends on the temperature of the nitrogen tank. And so after that one minute, that's when you really want to start monitoring this pressure right here. The thing to think about is that that nitrogen bottle has been sitting outside and it's about 90 degrees outside. This tubing is connected to an indoor evaporator coil inside the building and it's only about 70 degrees inside. And so nitrogen pressure will fluctuate with temperature, not as much as a refrigerant or air, though. It now seems to be holding pretty steady at 349.2. So now I'm going to start my timer for 10 minutes. During the 10 minute pressure test, it's a good time to put the bulb back in place. And so you see this squished piece of copper, it's doing that to make sure that there's a good amount of surface area for contact with the bulb. So you just wanna make sure to tighten this back down into place. Don't over tighten it, but you wanna make sure there's no light through there and it's making good contact, which it is. And next what we're gonna do is put the insulation tape back over this.
So we're back at the outdoor unit. It's been 10 minutes and our pressure actually has risen back up to 350.5. And that's because I shut off a indoor air conditioning unit that was actually blowing low temperature air towards that indoor coil. Because that coil was lowering in temperature, that's why it was showing that our pressure was lowering. And then once I turned that off inside and the temperature rose to say about 74 degrees, our pressure rose back up again. So that tells you how susceptible nitrogen is to an increase or decrease in temperature. Anyway, our pressure has not fallen. We don't have any leaks in the system. The next steps are to release the nitrogen pressure, then to do the vacuum procedure, hold the vacuum below 500 microns, and then break the vacuum with refrigerant from the system. Then after you have positive pressure, you can put the valve cores back in to the ports and then you're, you're ready to start the unit up. If you want to learn more about preparing a system for refrigerant, checking the refrigerant charge, and troubleshooting, make sure to check out our Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning book, our 1,000 Question Workbook, and also Quick Reference Cards, all available over on Amazon and also at our website at acservicetech.com. Also, make sure to check out some of the free resources we have over at acservicetech.com, such as the articles, the quick tips, the calculators, the quizzes. So make sure you take advantage of that, and hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.